Sometimes you make a decision to peek behind the curtain, only to find that you wish you didn't. And that is what happened to me when I investigated think tanks. I was naive and thought they were just researchers, academics, studying specific topics. Boy, was I wrong. As I explain what think tanks are and how they change the world around us, you will see too behind the curtain and see the power that they hold. This is what think tanks are. Now what is a think tank? Think tanks, sometimes referred as policy institutes, are a non-governmental organization, NGO, which is a non-profitable operation that researches, advises, plans, anything under the sun. In short, simple definition of what a think tank is, a group of people got together in a non-profit setting recommends, provides research, and even drafts legislation for other people, groups, and governments. At first glance, you may think to yourself, well, that sounds nice, providing information and plans to businesses and governments and politicians. And I would say, you're getting too far ahead of yourself, so hold your horses. But before I get into the shadows that Think Tanks cast, a quick synopsis on where they come from. Now, think tanks in many different forms have existed since civilizations and empires were created. Although those think tanks took more of a role of an advisor to the rulers rather than anything close to what we have today. The first modern-ish think tank, the form that it's currently in and we would recognize, would start in London in 1831. A think tank called the Royal United Service Institute which still exists today, was formed. The main purpose of this first modern think tank was to advise on military conflicts and preparations. They understood the importance of planning and having a different group's perspective. Hence, the Royal United Service Institute was born. And on the other side of the Atlantic, think tanks in America wouldn't make a big splash until Andrew Carnegie got involved. He was so disgusted by the First World War, he formed Carnegie Endowment for International Peace in 1910. Not the first think tank in America, but a big splash in America in terms of history. Then fast forward a little bit, World War II had just ended, which changed everything across the world, even think tanks. Think tanks in America gained a lot of traction, especially in the military sector, and became part of the military industrial complex in some aspects, not all. Think tanks in America became monumental even more so during the Cold War, even helping the US government and guiding the US government with war policies. Think tanks went from advisors, researchers, to planners, and having a direct involvement. Think tanks began to sit in and host peace talks with warring nations, telling officials the course of action that they believed was the right one. The think tank, Brookings Institute, has even advised multiple presidents of the United States on how to run their administration smoothly. And for some think tanks, it's not just one government, but multiple. Even today, there are think tanks that advise the United Nations or think tanks that advise to more than one different country at a time. The borders in which think tanks operate are completely up for discussion and tend to be organization to organization specific. Then, during the Cold War in the 20th century, we get to 1980, where the market of think tanks, which was made up of a few organizations, exploded. Half the think tanks that exist were made after 1980. So big boom. Not sure what happened, but it went from worldwide having a few thousand in total to its current standing of over 11,000 different think tank organizations. And these organizations themselves vary from a few dozen people to thousands of people. Yeah, there's 
really no size specification for think tanks. It could be as small as like five people to, well, sky's the limit. Which brings us to present day. Now we go into how think tanks operate and how they function. I want to point out most, if not all, think tanks are very public with their stance on political spectrums and open to their beliefs and the cause or causes they are working towards. And like I mentioned, think tanks are nonprofit organizations. So people donate them because of the organization's beliefs or political spectrum. And that's how think tanks get money to continue operations through charity donations from individuals, from businesses, to even foreign entities. Now, once they receive this money, usually aligned with the initial cause of the think tank, foreign aid, military, social policy, take your pick, the think tank starts to work towards their goals. They investigate, collect data, decide and plan the best course of action, which sounds wonderful on paper, but best course of action for who? That tends to vary. Also important to note, think tanks have been known to show their data to the individual investors to make sure it's okay to publish their findings and that the investor was happy. And with so much money, I am willing to wager some of the think tanks, though may be good intentioned, are on the payroll for someone and might be changing the data. Now, once they have the data that they were looking for, this is where think tanks break apart as a generic term and start becoming more specific. Categorization, so to speak. And as far as I can tell, there are five major types of think tanks. The first one tends to be the most common is the ideological think tanks. These think tanks work on social and philosophical questions for society. This type of think tank tends to work a lot with policymakers to help make laws towards a specific idea or moral compass that the organization has. Like I said, think tanks are pretty open where they internally stand on the political spectrum. So they tend to help get information or develop plans for whatever political side that that would help them the most or that the side that they're on in order to help make laws towards a specific idea that the organization has. The second type of think tank sticking with laws is a state think tank. This think tank focuses more on a state level government and state level organizations. Same idea as the previous one, but not so much federal broad strokes, more localized, more state government, district government, not federal. The third one is practical think tanks. These think tanks are the movers and shakers of getting shit done, they tend to be the organizations that figure out how to get funding to specific charities, how to best distribute food and foreign aid programs. Practical think tanks tend to not only be focused about the paperwork, but also how to implement the idea from the data they just collected. The fourth type is specialty think tanks. Now this is probably the second most common think tank. These think tanks, they draw a line in the sand. They focus all their effort on one specific issue, whether it be an environmental issue or a militaristic one. The specialty think tanks are broad in multiple categories. I know, ironic, isn't it? But they tend to have their eyes on the prize, so to speak. Diet hard think tanks, in lack of better words. Though the different categories that those think tanks operate in can vary. Once they chose one subject, they tend to be only on that subject and only that individual piece. No broad strokes, no really changing that one specific thing. The last type is a weird one, the gray zone, which tends to morph into other types of think tanks depending on the situation. That would be the economic think tank. Obviously, it mainly focuses on economic issues, but it varies from small government, federal government, domestic or foreign. Economic think tanks, as far as I can tell, are a mighty morphing beast. And it all comes down to a case by case scenario, but they tend to be more budget-wise, more 
I mean, cash flow, economics, not so much implementation or lawmaking, so to speak. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, well, Mike, it's all good and dandy that you're telling us this, but why is it so important? And why are they the power behind the curtain like you said? Ah, now this is where we really get to see the strings being pulled. To be blunt, politicians don't know anything. I don't think that's a big surprise there. And they have to get so much information brought to them so they can make policies and vote on bills for the people of their country that it can be overwhelming. So some politicians simply look to think tanks. Having a third party to present politicians with data, plans, and legislation. So, the politicians don't have to do it themselves. And the think tanks doing all this work, providing all the data to the politicians, is being funded by an unknown party for unknown reasons. That situation can make a very slippery slope. When money and laws mix, it tends to lead to power and corruption. Now at this point you may be asking yourself, think tanks sound a lot like lobbyists. And you'd be right. As far as I can tell, the defining difference between think tanks and lobbyists is that think tanks tend to truly believe in their cause, while lobbyists is more of a higher bidder situation. Which is more dangerous, a zealot or a mercenary? I don't know. Plus, with donations being the life source of the think tanks, I'm curious on how much the nonprofit organizations are influenced by money and donors. This is a question I'm not alone in. There has recently been a new bill introduced in America, the HR 1438 Think Tank Transparency Act, which on paper is supposed to make think tanks and other nonprofits that influence policy show more where they get their donations from. With that being said, laws have attempted, keyword attempted, to make think tanks more transparent in the past to no avail. With this new bill, will it make a difference? I doubt it. But with that being said, there are good think tanks. Think tanks have improved lives, helped end wars, and saved lives in multiple different ways. They're just a dual-edged sword that humanity has made and is playing with. And we just quite haven't figured it out yet. And what I've told you today is just the tip of the iceberg of the complexity that are think tanks. They are a beast all on their own. Think tanks influence so much of our world, from nations getting food to countries making laws, hell, to even countries coming to peace. And before I did an investigation into think tanks, I had no idea the complexity that they have and the importance that they play. They make policies, organizations which before researching this, I've never heard their names, make laws that directly affect my life and my country's trajectory. So I implore you all, investigate, go down the rabbit hole, and see for yourself how think tanks are changing your own personal world. These organizations are trying to decide a future. I think it's important to know what future they want. And with that being said, thank you all for listening.